Hey guys, so today I'm doing the central heating at the house. Um, should have made a start on this a bit earlier, but there you go, everything in a rush. So what I've started doing, I've hung the radiators in place. So in each room, okay, that's removed. But first of all, hanging the radiators is the best part for plan A of the, uh, of the planning really. Just because then you know where all the pipe work runs need to go. That's just kind of how I taught myself in in plumbing in the UK of how I did it. So yeah, so all, uh, all I've done is put all the, the radiators in place and then the ones up above in, in the rooms above, I've just drilled through um, in the places as you can see, the two holes in the ceiling. So I'll just drop a piece of pipe through there and then that'll all be connected up in this roof space here. There's going to be a 100 mil void, so uh, everything will be hidden. But because these are concrete floors um, and not the old voided wooden floors that they do have in England, um, you haven't got really much choice apart from, you know, either making a, uh, a voided ceiling or a, you know, a voided floor, but, you know, that costs a lot more. Or channeling it all in, which is just a nightmare with this, uh, with this cement anyway, um, and reinforced concrete. So we decided that's the best option to do. So, right, the, the next stage is now, I've got the radiator valves, which I'm now PTFEing in the, in the corner bar right now. So I'll just show you. So this is what the, the valve ends look like. Uh, I usually put 16 wraps of PTFE around there. Everyone's got their own choice, but you know, usually uh, around the 20 mark and just maybe a bit lower, that's that's all good. And then these are kind of like the radiator valves here. So you've got the, the thermostatic radiator valve um, with the thermostatic head that goes on top. That just sort of basically measures the room temperature in the room. If you have it on like number two, say that's 15 degrees in the room. If it drops below 15 degrees, it'll open up the valve and basically turn the radiator on as long as the heating is on. So that means you can adjust the temperatures in your rooms. Um, and then I've got, yeah, the other sides, which is lock shield valves. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna be wrapping these now. Um, you kind of do it in sort of like a clockwork, clockwise fashion, which I'll show you in a second. Um, once I've done all that, I'll put them all in, put the valves on, and then I'll start dropping the pipes on. Unfortunately, in Croatia, they don't have like just a normal sort of pipe union that you can just put your pipe in and you know compression joint it on. They are female joints um, onto the radiator valves, so I have had to buy separate connectors, which are these. So I can solder into one end, and the other end is just threaded. It's a bit of a pain in the bum, but there is no other options here in Croatia, so that's what I've just had to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna crack on with that and then I'm just gonna start with, you know, working out some pipe work runs, etc. So in terms of getting these valves in the radiator, you might be wondering how that's possible as there's nothing really to cling on. But inside, you'll see it's like a little bit of a pattern inside. Oh, let me show you. Uh, there you go. Can you see? Right. So basically that will go in the valve. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. And then I've got this special tool. Um, they didn't really have a normal one in, in the shop, but I use this one in England anyway. Um, and it costs about 50 euro here, but it's about 30 quid in England, so it's more expensive here. And it's just a ratchet tool, so you'll then slide it in. There you go, nice. And just ratchet it. Okay, change the side. One's for loosening and one's for tightening. We'll put on the tightening side, measure it up, and then 
that's it. days. So I've soldered a few bits already. I'm working with copper because I'm most used to copper, but you guys can work with whatever you feel like using. Um, so as you can see, we've just got the pipes going off. Just go down, put a drain off there. Just in case you ever need to drain off, it's always handy to put a drain off valve on. That's what it looks like. Soldered there and up to there. So yeah, that's just ready to join on when I've done that. And I'm doing that in every room here. Here as well, and drain off on every drop. Like I said, you're gonna have a problem if you don't have a drain off and you get a leak. So yeah, that's just ready up there as well. Now, so we'll go to this one, which I've just started doing. So I can walk through a bit of it. So what joints you need really is, um, I've got a pair of grips, I've got solder wire, um, I've got flux, but this is a special type of flux. First time I've come across this actually, and um, it's quite interesting. Very interesting why they don't have this in the UK, but I'm gonna show you exactly what it does in a minute. Uh, 15 mil elbows, this is all 15 mil pipe, and then I'm gonna have 22 mil flow and return. Uh, we've got some 15 T's as well, um, and blowtorch and something to cut the pipe. They don't actually have these in Croatia, so I had to get this from the UK, but this is just a pipe cutter. Now you just turn around and it cuts the pipe easily. Uh, but here they have an alternate version, which is a bit more of a pain to use, and I love using these, so yeah, if you can get these, these are the best. All right, let's get to it. Copper is actually thicker here in Croatia, one mil thick. It's like the old stuff they used in England. Make sure you've got some wire wool so you can uh, clean up your joints. I clean up the pipe just because to adhese it, to solder it, it needs to be clean, otherwise the solder just won't stick. And that's the reason we do that. Now obviously when you use a new pipe, sometimes there isn't any point of cleaning it, but I always like to do it anyway. Apply your flux. Get your elbow, stick it on. Then once you've cut that, you kind of know where to cut next. So I don't do any measuring. Everything's just by eye. It's a lot faster. 
Just mark at the top of that pipe there. Okay. Do the same here. Paste it up. Sometimes you may struggle to put that on, so just undo the valve if that's the case. Slide it on like that, and then get the valve back on. There we go, that's all in place now. So now we are safe to kind of clean this up and then solder it. Now this is a very kind of diff this is a very kind of different method that I normally use just because this flux is actually also solder. So when you heat it up, it actually solders the pipe as well. We don't have this in the UK. We have to use soldering wire as well as flux. But in this case, all you have to do is heat it up. It's quite good really, but I mean, I don't know what the, uh, the results are gonna be. I guess we'll find out at the end. Hopefully no leaks. Just clean it up just so that we get perfect joints. Okay, so that's done. Obviously you should use a heat proof mat as well if you don't want to damage the wall, but seeing as mine are getting painted, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, once it's been soldered, you can then wait a bit and then you can just clean it down with um, more my wall. So yeah, that's how I'll do it and that's how I'll carry on.